Well, it's Thanksgiving here in gobble, the United gobble, States. Gobble, gobble, gobble. And that means we're just going to roll rock, rock. the TV in here like a hungover substitute teacher and hang out while watching other people make fools of themselves while you, presumably, stuff your face with some delicious pies and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to crank out this episode for you lovely people. Hit up a turkey trot, watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, complete with lip-syncing performances from artists I've never heard of, and then pass out on the couch and regret every piece of food I consumed before dragging my tryptophan-filled ass back here to film Weekly Weird News at some point. And yeah, it's, it's not going to be an episode entirely made up of clips because we do have a bunch of updates for you, including an update that we're going to start with that we all saw coming. An update that we, a re mile away. we repeatedly mentioned during the episode would probably be resolved before the episode went up, and it in fact was. Yes. Sam Altman is back in charge of OpenAI once again. Well... Capping off a week that apparently meant nothing. What did we learn? Nothing. So yeah, the on-again, off-again relationship that CEO Sam Altman has had with OpenAI, which developed and operates two of the biggest names in the AI space, ChatGPT and DALL-E, has been one for the record books, and some mysteries still remain. Last week, he was abruptly fired. Then there were rumors that he would be rehired. Then a majority of his employees, his former current employees yeah. at OpenAI threatened to follow him to Microsoft. <laughs> then the former CEO of Twitch, a self-proclaimed AI doomer, was put in charge. And then we attempted to squeeze in a video about all this before more drama unfolded, only for OpenAI to announce that Sam Alton was back at the helm just before our video went live late Tuesday night. Uh-huh. Based on what it was appears... Schrodinger's uh, AI company. We willed it into existence. Mm -hmm. we, we control the lathe of heaven. So based on what appears to be the reasoning behind his removal, the fact that he's been reinstated so quickly, it doesn't exactly give us hope for OpenAI's original goal of developing artificial intelligence that is safe and beneficial, because all signs are pointing to the fact that Altman and his team were willing to just take off the guardrails in order to maximize profits for themselves and their shareholders. Yeah. Ethics be damned. The Washington Post sums up this aspect of the drama in one of their many articles from the past few days, saying, OpenAI started in 2015 as a nonprofit research lab, but in recent years, under Altman's leadership, it took on billions of dollars in investment from the likes of tech giant Microsoft and venture capitalists, and began developing consumer products. Outside critics and some employees worried that the company had abandoned its mission and was behaving more like a big tech company when it was originally meant to provide a more transparent, democratic alternative to the tech giants. Now, with Altman back at the helm after what was a chaotic couple of days, you'd have to imagine that any remaining arguments in favor of slowing development and deployment out of an abundance of caution would be thrown out the window. Regardless, Here's the latest and hopefully final update regarding OpenAI's internal power struggle from the New York Times. Final update before their AGI kills us all. Yes. Late Tuesday, OpenAI said Sam Altman was returning as its chief executive five days after the artificial intelligence startup's board of directors forced him out. At the company's San Francisco office, giddy employees snacked on chicken tenders. <laughs> oh, my tendies. Drank boba tea and champagne. Ugh. Weird combo. At the same time, and celebrated Mr. Altman's return deep into the night. Mr. Altman's reinstatement capped a corporate drama that mixed piles of money, a pressure campaign from allies, intense media attention, and a steadfast belief among some in the AI community that they should proceed with caution with what they are building. Now OpenAI, which for two days appeared to be on the brink of collapse just a year after introducing the popular ChatGPT chatbot, will replace a heavily criticized board of directors with a more traditional group, including former Treasury Secretary Lawrence Summers and a former executive from the software giant Salesforce. Yep. Larry Summers, actual human vampire. Not exactly hiding their intentions with those hires, um, in addition to Altman being reinstated, but we digress. Here's more from the article. OpenAI's three board members spent most of Tuesday on Google Meet video calls discussing board options. They spoke with the chief executive of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, several times, one of the people said. It's weird they didn't use Teams. Yeah, not really a vote of confidence on your own products, sir. Mm. Uh, Mr. Altman's allies offered a board slate of Mr. D'Angelo, Mr. Summers, and Brett Taylor, a seasoned Silicon Valley executive. No one involved in discussions has explained how Mr. Summers became an option, and he did not respond to requests for comment on Wednesday. 
but he has recently established himself as an authority on AI and economics. Mr. Summers has warned that ChatGPT will come for the cognitive class, changing how doctors make diagnoses, editors work on books, and Wall Street traders invest. The board considered Mr. Summers to be an independent thinker with enough management experience to hold his ground against Mr. Altman, said two of the people familiar with the negotiations. By Tuesday evening, they had a deal. Thanksgiving helped. Despite all their disagreements, everyone agreed the chaos should not spill into Thursday, one person said. And I'd venture to guess that uh, Mr. Summers, despite them saying that he will keep Mr. Altman in check, is probably there just to uh, be that facade of uh, checks and balances. I, it, he's not even that great of a choice for that. The, yeah. He seems to just care about the economy and uh, like... He, He's not a person that projects uh, a lot of concern for anything aside from profits. Uh, uh, other than apparently being like, oh no, the robots are coming for my job too? Now we've yeah. gone too far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if OpenAI was legit, they would replace the board and the CEO with an AI. Yeah, we said the that fact yesterday. The fact that they haven't, like, that's... Uh, mm. it, it, I mean, the actions of the past week or so have proven that AI might be better at their jobs than they are. Yeah. And we should start at the top and then work our way that's down. That's right. That's right. I think that's something we can all agree you on. You want to cut costs, you start at the top. Start at the top. That's just one guy you got to get rid of. That's the real trickle down economics. So yeah, everything's essentially back to where it all started just when, one week ago, but only after an extremely public dissolution of trust between people who are justifiably worried about taking AI too far, too fast, and people who seem ready to just start milking this cash cow for everything it's worth. Mm -hmm. And the milkers have won. Yeah. We can't help but assume that this win for Altman and his crew is a bad omen for the already absurd corporate adoption rate of AI to automate businesses and creative fields, especially when his views on how this tech should be deployed have just been fully emboldened by all of the events that have played out over the past week. Yeah. But hey, look, I was right. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. But who cares? Pass the gravy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. hey, cut me a slice of that cookie. Mm, delicious pecan pie. Mm. Cranberry sauce? No, that's disgusting. Get that the fuck out of here. Why no, are we thanks. still making that? Dad, stop talking politics. <laughs> so, yeah, let's move on now, though, mm -hmm. because as you've probably noticed, we've yet to utter the most annoying name on the internet, and that will continue for at least the next few minutes. You have been marked safe. There is news about that man and his stupid website, but we're going to wait a little bit longer mm -hmm. and fill this episode out a little bit more so you can continue avoiding your family at the dinner table. Or maybe you've got them all gathered around. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hey, Uncle Jim. Hey, Aunt Stacy. Hey. Hey, Cousin Frank, uh -huh. welcome back. We missed you. The whole family's here. The hey, whole gang. Look, it's the, they, they, the dog's here. Yeah. What? Well, hey, don't feed that dog from the table. He'll get used to it. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Or if you want him to calm down, the turkey does work. Also, don't take that dog around other dogs right now. There's a... Uh, yeah, there's, there's a... Kind of nasal flu going on. Yeah, they around. got like the black plague for dogs happening. Mm -hmm. so. New plague drop. This it? one's for the dogs. Yeah. Anyways, avoiding your family might be the correct move this year, especially if they've been diagnosed with conservative media-induced brainworms, because those news outlets, they're not satisfied with simply making your parents and relatives insufferable, hate-filled chuds. That's you, Uncle Dave. <laughs> <laughs> they're also giving them direct instructions on how to ruin Thanksgiving dinner and further alienate the people who used to enjoy their company. During a recent broadcast, conservative outlet Newsmax ran the following segment potentially becoming the first outlet to kickstart a war on Thanksgiving dinner. We knew the war would come. Mm -hmm. And this is under a Chiron that commands their viewers, your goal, get libs to say the quiet part out loud. That's an interesting phrase because the, the phrase, the quiet part out loud has traditionally been pointed the other way. But yeah, they're just trying to uh, put a mirror back and I say, can't, this is what they say, we'll do it back at them. I can't even begin to guess what the quiet part for libs might even be. The only Because the quiet part for conserv conservatives is just saying, Doing like, some racist Yes, shit. I am actually racist. Yeah. The uh, the flip side of that, I believe, would be a, uh, a fake scenario like the one where he shows up at the liberal coffee shop and everyone yeah. talks about how much they love Trump. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I was at the liberal coffee shop earlier today. Everyone was just like, oh, I really miss when Trump was president. Mm -hmm. But I would never tell anyone. Yeah. Because all my lib friends who also agree with me, 
they would, I guess, agree with. Well, I guess it doesn't really work then. Shit. I went down to your family's house for Thanksgiving dinner, and they all hated you. Uh, anyways, their instructions are basically telling boomers directly to get drunk and argue about politics at the dinner table or else the Democrats are going to win the next election. <laughs> this is a great plan. It can't possibly back. Do it. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> Here, here's the clip. You at the dinner table should be no different. I'm talking take no prisoners, especially if it's your house. There's no sitting this one out, folks, even among a family dinner. The battles you don't pick now, you lose. And we're not losers. So pick every battle, have every debate, because if you don't convince those people watching, they might vote Democrat. We can't have that. So break out the Trump wine, claim your unvaccinated seat at the head of the table, and bottoms up, baby. And remember, it's just the warm-up for Christmas. Wow. Also, it, this is... I mean, this you're describing what already is happening at Thanksgiving yeah, yeah, yeah. in a, probably ha at least half the households in this country. Not mine, thankfully. Yeah. Just a bunch of bunch of libs sitting around the table eating their soy tur No, we eat a real turkey. Yeah. Well, I don't because it's disgusting. I like a good turkey. If it's prepared correctly. We, we end the episode with how to not prepare it correctly thanks to some videos from the U U.S. Consumer Protections Agency, but uh, we'll get to that later. D don't start your turkey yet until we yeah. tell you how to Keep it, it in the oven. But back to that clip. Just incredible stuff that will undoubtedly lead a bunch of angry seniors to wonder why their families don't come visit more often. Yeah, the... <laughs> what a weird tactic to use. I like, I, again, I just love that this assumes that their viewers haven't already been alienating their families at every family gathering for Continue to drive decades. that wedge. Like, to go back to at least 9-11, but even before that, uh, yeah. Fox News kicked off in the 90s and... Uh, they were saying the same shit about Bill Clinton as they're saying, they said about Obama, as they said about Biden. And, uh, this, this new strategy is very interesting. Uh -huh. I, I'd never thought about that. Well, they're trying to get out ahead of it so that the liberals at the table don't start the conversation and commandeer it. You gotta get in first. Yeah. You gotta get, get all liquored up and start screaming at your kids and grandkids. That's right. And then sit there. To show dominance. Flabbergasted as to why they're covering your grandchildren's ears and walking them rapidly out of the house. Yeah. Never to return. Just leave the Christmas presents on our doorstep, Dad. Yeah. So much for uh, the tolerant left. <laughs> but as far as Thanksgiving-themed political rants go, it would be hard to top the tweet sent out by former Ohio Congressman Josh Mandel a few years back. It's a, just a powerful poem that is as relevant today as the day it was written. Elliot, please read this Amazing poem. <clears throat> this is Liberal Thanksgiving mm -hmm. by uh, Joshua Mandel. They, them, turkey, crybaby cranberry sauce, pronoun pumpkin pie, oh, mommy milker mac and cheese. <laughs> I guess mommy milkers are for the libs. Joe Biden, dream, fuck off, dream bean casserole, and stuffing. Mm. That last mo it point is so powerful because it really brings everyone together. Are they really gonna concede uh, big tits to the libs? I, I think mean, so, yeah. Sorry. A bit of a cell phone here. You libs can keep your mommy milkers. Our ladies over here, very, very uh, modestly uh, endowed. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't, as they say online, backtrace this, but I remember the claim being that uh, this former congressman, and I believe former treasurer of the state of Ohio, uh, just actually stole this tweet from another account and was like, oh. yep. That's exact. You know what? That's true. And <laughs> yeah, they got those they them turkeys now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I need to let my uh, my people know about this. But, so yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm getting hungry just thinking about that spread. That, yeah, especially. I'm going back for seconds. That crybaby cranberry sauce. Mm -hmm. Ah, the mommy milker mac and cheese. Uh, I I can't get enough on my plate. Joe Biden, dream. Dream bean casserole. They really casserole. they really just gave up at that point. And stuffing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But while we're biding our time, hey, uh, before it's break, a fun episode. Yeah, uh, before we bring up the latest news related to that certain dickhead billionaire, let's check out another news story that was dominating the conversation in the lead up to Thanksgiving, and one that quickly spiraled out of control for absolutely no reason other than fear mongering. A, so a car crashed into the Canadian border, exploded, and Fox News immediately just started claiming that it was a terrorist attack. Uh, even though, uh, yeah, actually turns out probably just a really bad 
sad, unfortunate car accident. Yeah. But, and, you know, for that hour or two where we thought it was terrorism, like, it really brought us together as a country. Yeah. Didn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, here's the fact as of when we filmed the episode. A Bentley carrying a driver and passenger were killed when their car, traveling at a very high rate of speed, hit something at the border and went airborne. It came down, smashed into the ground, caught fire, and unfortunately, it killed the two people inside and injured one Border Patrol officer. The video of this is fucking insane, it by is the way. Dukes of Hazzard I don't level. understand how this was, is, like, physically possible. Well, it was probably one of those concrete uh, barriers that has an angle to it that like, separates the cars. how fucking fast do you have to be going? Like, it looks like, like they were going, like, 100 miles an hour. This thing gets, like, 50 feet of air. Also, heavy car, so it, when it yeah. came down, it was with some force. But yeah, a terrible accident. But that is what it appears to be. Just a terrible, unfortunate accident. No, they were trying to fly that car into the Freedom Tower. Uh-huh. They just didn't get us. They were trying to launch over the Ni- over Niagara Falls and into one of those casinos on the, cas- on the Canadian side. Yeah, because they hate us for our freedom. <laughs> uh, so, yes, none of the, uh, the actual news that came out immediately after this happened uh, stopped Fox News from whipping up their viewers into a frenzy on Wednesday of this week, claiming that a terrorist attack had taken place at the U.S.-Canadian border and somehow blaming this attack, this attack, on Joe Biden's open border policies and Islamic terror. I mean, it did involve the border, and Joe Biden is the president, so... There you go. They eventually did start to walk back their claims and then eventually stopped reporting it as a terror attack altogether, just in time for one of the most incredibly timed segment switches that we have seen. You couldn't have planned this any better. This is crazy. And also, uh, if you're watching this during Thanksgiving and Uncle Jack has been talking about the terror attack that happened uh, yesterday, it's probably because they played this shit for like two hours and then we're like, oh, well, never mind. And, and, and then just the like, way, just, yeah, just very quickly moved on. And a anyone, lie spreads around the world faster than the truth can put its shoes yeah, on. Anyone who'd been watching, you know, at any section of that yeah. would be left with the impression. Well, I've seen enough. Time to start driving to Thanksgiving. Yeah, here. and I, I doubt Fox is going to, like, address this again. So. Uh, they, they they sort of did in, uh, well, we'll get to it. Okay, so yeah, we're going to play some clips. But after repeating the claim that this might have been an intentional act of terror, despite that not being true, they pivot directly into a segment about how they're upset that liberals are trying to tamp down on misinformation. It is unbelievable. <laughs> And then even later, uh, they essentially do the, well, it's actually liberals' fault that we claimed it was an attack. And the fact that you believed it, it says a lot about this administration. Literal insanity, so here's your clips. Yeah. Uh, Lexus McAdams is reporting that, co- that according to high-level police sources, the explosion was an attempted terrorist attack. A lot of explosives in the vehicle at the time. The two people who were in the car are deceased. One Border Patrol officer was injured. Driving from the U.S. apparently to Canada, and we're trying to drive toward the CBP building. We don't know how long the people who perpetrated this attack have been in this country. Did they recently come across? Did they come, did they come into the country legally? Did they come across illegally and claim asylum? Were they some of the nearly one million gotaways who've come into this country? Were they radicalized in this country? Were they radicalized at all? Did they come into the country that way? There are so many questions yet to be answered, but but given, as you point out, the situation that we have with immigration in this country, you, you just don't know who's coming in. Well, this brings me back to some of my earliest days um, in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, in back in, I was there back in 2007, and V-beds, uh, which may essentially this is what it was, which is a, a vehicle IED, uh, leases what we're reporting that um, that this car was laden with, and that is something that was a hallmark in both Iraq and Afghanistan, especially in the height of U.S. fighting there. So this is a hallmark of, of terrorist groups. We saw both Sunni and Shia terrorist groups using this. You, you have to wonder who would be behind this and, and what is the motive, the fact that this was perpetrated, apparently, 
against a border patrol or customs and border protection facility. Now, we told you earlier that there was an explosion because there were explosives inside the car, and now authorities are apparently walking that back just a little bit, saying it's unclear if there were explosives or how many explosives. Holding a news conference and saying there was no indication of a terror attack in the car explosion oh. at the U.S.-Canada border. We are going to <coughs> monitor that. And coming up, liberal leaders think they know what's best when it comes to fighting so-called misinformation. What happened at the border today sent chills through most Americans. It was scary. People didn't know if it was a terrorist attack. We didn't know exactly what was happening or what the motive was. It made us ask ourselves, could it have been related to the open border policies of the administration? Was it simply an accident? We don't know but it caused us all to think. We shouldn't be living in fear, but that's what the cluelessness in DC is forcing us to do. It's having dire consequences on the safety of our nation and the psyche of the average American. But at the bare minimum, we need to know who's crossing into our country, why are they here, where are they going, what are they doing? And just so we're not leading into the second half of the show with a story about a car exploding, let's talk about a band imploding instead. Folks, this is so sad. Or at least people who are over the age of 35. We regret to inform you that Hall and Oates apparently hate each other. Yeah, also we regret to inform you that Hall and Oates are two people. It's not just one guy named Holland Oates. Yes, and this not to be Break confused it. with Garfunkel and Oates, the comedy duo yeah, of uh, Ricky Lindholm and which is a, Kate Micucci. Which is a, a joke playing on Simon and Garfunkel. And Holland, and Holland Oates is the second name. They got that them. song about uh, you can put it in the butt. It's the loophole uh, yeah, to yeah, not yeah. lose your virginity and all that. Yeah. Uh, side note, Kate Micucci just put out a uh, a, a child's album like Raffi. Oh, very, I can see it working fun. for her. She yeah. went to my college yeah. and uh, she was also in the art department. Mm -hmm. I saw her live and she did a whole bit where she was like spilling some major tea on something that I believe I'm the only person in the audience like knew what she was talking about. It was huh. very weird. Wow. She's like not naming names, but I'm like, I know exactly who that is. I know who that is. Well, now uh, her new album has a song about shopping at the grocery store. Well. It's fun. It's for kids and it's great. You know, kids need to shop. But back to the group that's imploding. Yeah, so Hall, Daryl Hall and John Oates. Mm -hmm. Oates is the mustache one. Okay, well, they hate each other so much that Hall is suing Oates and has filed a restraining order against him. Elliot, now, can, can you please give us a, a wonderful example of one of those Hall and Oates classics so that all the Zoomers know who we're talking about. Okay, uh, private eyes are watching you, watching your every move. Gosh, I private hope we... eyes are watching you. I hope we don't get oh, private uh... eyes. Oh, watching you, watching you, watching you, watching you. Ooh, ooh. Well, I won't stop. stop. <laughs> You make my dreams come, come true. Pop, pop. Ah, ah. I sure hope we don't get copyright struck for that, that was amazing perfect, yeah. performance. But yeah, when I hear about this lawsuit, I'm like, I can't go for that. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no can do. <laughs> I can't go for that. Can't go for that. Ask can't your go for that. Ask your parents about old Hall and Oates. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yes, now here's a, uh, as brief as possible explanation of this news from Variety because we know that a very few of, out, of you out there watching care about this. Little information about the lawsuit is publicly available as the court documents are sealed, but based on court records, Hall filed an undisclosed complaint against Oates on November 16th, as well as a motion for a temporary restraining order as reported by Philadelphia Magazine. The following day, the court officially issued a temporary restraining order to begin November 30th. The Nashville Chancery Court, Ooh. oh, they got one too, mm. confirmed the existence of the lawsuit to Variety, but declined further comment because the lawsuit is sealed. As TMZ points out, Hall disparaged Oates on Bill Maher's Club Random podcast last year, saying, you think John Oates is my partner? He's my business partner. He's not my creative partner. Damn. He went on, John and I are brothers, but we are not creative brothers. We are business partners. We made records called Hall & Oates together, but we've always been very separate. And that's a really important thing for me. Damn. Yeah, and- <laughs> That's kind of fucked up. And also- But he's the one suing Oates? But- I don't understand. The fact that Bill Maher yeah. is responsible, directly a, responsible for this. Yeah, what a, as if Bill Maher wasn't like terrible enough. Here he is destroying this musical partnership that dates back to like the late 60s, I believe. Yeah. Blue-eyed soul. 
And yeah, it's, oh, oh, here it comes. Watch out, oats, they tear you up. Oh, oh here it comes. A restraining Man, order. <laughs> well, we certainly hope things work out uh, between Hull and Oates. Because, yeah, between them hating each other and also Desus and Mero splitting up, we might be the only remaining entertainment duo left. Uh, I mean, Rhett and Link are still doing their thing, too. Ten and Teller. Uh, are they together anymore? I think their Las Vegas residency ended. No, the, I think... I Don't break my heart with that one, too. I'm pretty sure Penn and Teller are still a thing. Uh, Amy Poehler and Tina Fey, they're on tour right now, so that's okay. still going okay. Okay. But uh, as far as online goes, Rhett and Link, I think that they're they're still out there, but... Uh, James and Elise Williams, <laughs> still yes. married. Yeah. Um, I don't know, let's go... The, Rhett and Link studio is nearby. We can go let some arrows out of their tires. And, yeah. Uh, then we can put, like, Rhett did this on Link's car. Yeah. And Link did this on Rhett's car. And then we can dominate... The entertainment duo market. Time to get up to some mischief. Uh -huh. Some holiday mischief. <laughs> well, anyway, now that we've traded explosions for petty vandalism, it's finally safe to thank today's sponsors before getting into the, uh, the, 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 the Elon Musk half. Sorry, the second half of the show. The second now, half of the show. Which is almost entirely Elon Musk. <sighs> we got two sponsors for today. Two. And we are thankful for both of them. Thank you, Lord, <laughs> for uncommon goods. Yeah. If you want to hear... Where'd you get that this holiday season? Uncommon Goods is your secret weapon. Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for your secret Santa or your entire family, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they want. A few of the coolest gifts that we found on their site include their National Park candles, create your own video game set, tabletop cornhole, and calming. Shower steamers. You toss one of those bad boys in the shower, crank it up. Woo! It's like a little tactical. Pretty pretty. It's a tactical grenade. For the, for the, for the shower. For, uh, but for it smells taking great. taking a shower, yeah. yeah. When you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. These fine products are often made in small batches, so shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S. They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. From art and jewelry to kitchen, home, and bar, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone. Not the same lackluster gifts you could find just anywhere. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash newsdump. That is uncommongoods.com slash newsdump for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. This episode is also sponsored by our friends at Factor. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're probably eating a good home cooked meal right now, but you don't. For always, every other day of the week? Yeah, you don't always have time to slave away in the kitchen making a, a turkey that takes hours. And they do have some delicious fall and winter favorites that taste delicious if you happen to uh, want to take the easy way out on Thanksgiving. So, this holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam packed days. Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef prepared, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all your holiday to dos. Too busy with holiday plans to cook, but want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Skip the stress of meal prepping over the holidays with Factor. Choose from 35 plus weekly flavor packed, fresh, never frozen meals that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences. All delivered right to your door and ready to eat in just two minutes. I had this uh, like sun roasted tomato and zucchini dish last night. Wow. Very good. Looking for special occasion meals during the holiday? Level up with Gourmet Plus options, prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. Enjoy premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. And when you're too busy running around to plan lunch, Factor has you covered with lunch to go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. Looking for calorie conscious options over the holidays that also taste great? Try delicious, dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. This November, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. 
Head to factormeals.com slash newsdump50 and use code newsdump50 to get 50% off. That's code newsdump50 at factormeals.com slash newsdump50 to get 50% off. All right, back to the news now, and we are certainly not thankful for this next guy. Elon Musk. Gah. Formerly known as X. Gah. Formerly known as Twitter. Gah. Yet here he is, disrupting the holiday week once again by getting very mad at news organizations who point out that his hate-filled cesspool of a social media site is a hate-filled cesspool. Early on Wednesday morning, a tweet was sent out from the official safety account, presumably because Lindy Ocarino told him to at least try to not draw direct attention to himself. Please, Elon, let this woman enjoy her Thanksgiving. But yeah, the safety, the at safety account uh, tweeted a bit of a preemptive statement that indicated that a big news story was about to drop. It said the following, NewsGuard is about to publish a quote unquote report on misinformation on X. As a for-profit company, they will only share the data that underpins their purported research if you pay. At NewsGuard Rating also uses these reports to pressure companies to buy their fact-checking services. It's a profit over any principal model. X has not seen any of the data in their report. Before publishing, we encourage all media outlets to request the data underpinning their claims. And just this for, is feeling very desperate vibes coming off. And of. just for clarity, in the report, when it dropped, it had links to uh, examples of where they're uh, reporting right. and analysis of course, came from. Because, like, yeah, NewsGuard is pretty, like, reputable. Yes. Like, uh, they came with receipts. Yeah, they they generally do. We've, we've covered, we've sourced them many times over the years. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, they back their shit up. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, the article was made public a few hours later and reported that X and misinformation super spreaders share ad money from false or egregiously misleading claims about the Israel-Hamas war. Here's some info from their reporting. On X, programmatic advertisements for dozens of major brands, governments, educational institutions, and nonprofits are being displayed in the feeds directly below viral posts advancing false or egregiously misleading claims about the Israel Hamas war, a NewsGuard analysis has found. Under the terms of a new advertising revenue sharing program that X introduced for its creators, a portion of the advertising income generated by these organizations would apparently be shared with these super spreaders of misinformation. From November 13th to November 22nd, 2023, NewsGuard analysts reviewed programmatic ads that appeared in the feed below 30 viral tweets that contained false or egregiously misleading information about the war. Programmatic ads are served via algorithms to target digital ads to online readers. Brands typically do not select where programmatic ads run and indeed are unaware of where their programmatic ads appear. These 30 viral tweets were posted by 10 of X's worst purveyors of Israel-Hamas war-related misinformation. These accounts have previously been identified by NewsGuard as repeat spreaders of misinformation about the conflict. These 30 tweets have cumulatively reached an audience of over 92 million viewers, according to X data. On average, each tweet was seen by 3 million people, and they then link to a list of examples. The 30 tweets advance some of the most egregious false or misleading claims about the war, which NewsGuard had previously debunked in its misinformation fingerprints database of the most significant false and misleading claims spreading online. NewsGuard's report comes after Apple, Disney, and IBM pulled their ads off of X after owner Elon Musk spoke approvingly of an anti-Semitic post on the platform. In response to NewsGuard's emailed questions about NewsGuard's findings and the ads appearing in the feeds below tweets advancing misinformation, X's press office sent an automated response. Busy now, please check back later. And in what appears to be an admission of guilt, before this article was posted, Musk himself tweeted the following. X Corp will be donating all revenue from advertising and subscriptions associated with the war in Gaza to hospitals in Israel and the Red Cross slash Crescent in Gaza. And NewsGuard adds that it is not clear what Musk meant by revenue from advertising and subscriptions associated with the war in Gaza, nor did uh, he comment on many or all of these account holders sharing in X's revenues for spreading misinformation. So, uh, yeah. Any money we make off of the misinformation about the war, uh, we will send, we'll, we'll turn it into charity, you see. Yeah. We're going to give it to both sides. <laughs> So yeah, this, this weird and sudden charitable gesture from Musk might have been slightly confusing before, but based on this reporting, it seems as though he's aware that his platform has directly profited off of misinformation being spread about this conflict and is attempting to rid himself of the extremely negative publicity that would 
be generated by handing over that money to aid groups in the region. Ah, you see? It's fine. Hey, nobody worry about it. Yeah. You know all that money that we made from people uh, willingly and intentionally spreading well, misinformation? Well, we got caught, so we're, we gave the money back. So. Actually, we're turning it into a positive. The, the more yeah. misinformation about this conflict, the more lives we can save. Yeah. This Don't, time, misinformation is going to save lives. Didn't think about that, did you? And that's despite never acknowledging the fact that these types of posts are actually encouraged by his platform's monetization strategy because the most incendiary content always gets more views and therefore more money. Also, more engagements. Yeah. Uh, it's the... They're being rewarded for posting stuff It's like the this. old SEO strategy from 10 years ago of, like, hate clicks, mm -hmm. but on a micro scale. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the, the entire, mo like, platform... Encourages this spreading of misinformation, mm -hmm. so it's not a problem that's going to go away. So another masterful gambit, sir. Yeah, but anyways, we're ready for a break, and you probably are too. So we are going to leave you with one final video, one that is extremely important for your Thanksgiving Day celebrations. Be careful when frying a turkey; it can and will explode. You want to make sure it's so frozen that it's like. <laughs> It's, and then just it's solid as a rock. Boiling water. You get that oil as hot as possible, and you stand right next to it. You actually stand over it, looking down. And yep. You drop the frozen turkey it's, right uh, into the, the oil. There's there's something that happens, some kind of mystical magic that happens when you take the hottest boiling liquid and the coldest turkey. Jesus needs to stop sending his coldest turkeys for his yeah. hottest battles. <laughs> Catastrophic <laughs> results. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, but if you prepare it properly, this won't happen. Luckily, as is tradition, the folks over at the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission... My favorite government agency. That's right. They have fun with it. They actually released an album. They did. Yeah. It's like cover songs that also provide like, safety. Yeah. I listened to it. It was fine. <laughs> It was better than it would sound, better than well, you would expect. There is now a hollow notes sized hole in the music industry that needs yeah. to be filled, and the U.S. Product Safety Commission is ready to fill that hole. I can go for that. Mm. So yes, uh, they have, of course, provided video examples of what can go wrong so that you can avoid making the same mistakes. Here you go. But rule number one, if you want to avoid this, just skip the turkey. It's, it's, Get a nice ham. Yeah, just anything else. Make a brisket. Yeah. Or some of those dino ribs. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for today's show. Have a good holiday. We will be back in, I don't know, a day or two. Who cares? With a new so, episode. Sometime this weekend, I think. <laughs> With a new episode of Weekly Weird News. But in the meantime, hey, like the video. We are so thankful for everyone and only the people that click the it's like button. It's Thanksgiving and uh, express your thanks by... They should change it to the thank button. Actually, there is a thank button. But it's called the join button. Well, there's, there's no, there's also, isn't there a thank button as well for I like. I think that used to be the donation. donation. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, anyway. Anyways, uh, yeah. You don't have to give us money. But. The more buttons you click on our videos, <laughs> the better just our start, videos Just like perform. Homer Simpson at the nuclear power plant. Just start smashing those buttons. Something's going to work. Except the unsubscribe button. You're not going to want to hit that. Don't do that. Hit the join button. Hit the thanks button. Hit the like button. Uh, I saw the animation finally for when people say like. Oh. It's not as noticeable as you would think, but it exists. Maybe okay. you saw it when we just mentioned it. Well, in the meantime, yeah. Like the video. If you want to kill some time, we got other videos. Yeah, they're over, over there. there. We yeah. talked more Elon Musk and... Um, what was on the last Weekly Weird News? I don't remember. Anyways, the orcas are, are they're up to no good again. Or yeah. up to actual good, if, in my opinion. So we'll, we'll get to that and more on Weekly Weird News. So check out those videos and have a great time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>